Hello and welcome to the conversation at airsafe.com, sponsored by Speed Break Publishing. I'm your host, Dr. Todd Curtis, the creator of airsafe.com, the reliable source of airline safety and security information since 1996. In this conversation, I'd like to talk about a January 10, 2008 turbulence event involving an Air Canada A319 that injured nine persons. The aircraft was on a scheduled domestic flight from Victoria, British Columbia to Toronto, Ontario. The aircraft experienced moderate to severe turbulence about 60 miles southwest of Cranbrook, British Columbia, over the Canadian Rockies. After the event, the crew decided to divert to Calgary, Alberta, where several injured passengers and crew members were treated at local hospitals. Fortunately, the injuries were relatively minor, and they were all released from the hospital later in the day. According to statements from passengers and from the investigating authorities, the aircraft went through a 10 to 15 second period of severe and abrupt maneuvers, and during and after these maneuvers, the aircraft lost about 4,000 feet in altitude. One passenger also reported that shortly after the plane was brought under the control, one of the pilots announced that there had been a problem with the autopilot. It's still very early in the investigation, and it's entirely premature to speculate as to the role that pilot input, turbulence, or any other factor had in this event. It will likely be several months before the Canadian authorities come up with a more definitive answer. While there are certainly risks that go along with turbulence, fatalities are relatively rare. AirSafe.com has identified only six events since 1980 where at least one passenger was killed due to a turbulence event, and in five out of six of those events, only one or two passengers were killed. The most recent fatal event was in December 1997 and involved the United Airlines 747 flying from Japan to the United States. Turbulence happens on just about every flight, but most of the time the amount of turbulence is very small and the level of risk is very low. In those rare cases where turbulence is severe, any passenger who's not buckled up can be seriously injured. Fatalities are a relatively rare event, but less severe injuries are more common. During the five-year period 2003 to 2007, the NTSB identified 57 turbulence events on airliners that involved a serious injury to at least one person on the aircraft. When the flight crew expects turbulence, they will work with the cabin crew to make sure the passengers are in their seats and belted in, and that serving carts and other loose items are properly secured. Because it's possible for turbulence to occur under any weather condition, you should take a few basic steps before and during the flight to ensure your safety. First, you should follow the instructions of the flight crew and the cabin crew. If the crew suggests that you return to your seat and put on your seat belt, do so as soon as you can. The other very important thing to do is wear your seat belt at all times, even during a smooth flight on a cloudless day. Turbulence is not always predictable and may arrive without warning. And the last basic piece of advice is be aware of your overhead bin. Avoid sitting under a bin that's heavily packed or that contains one or more heavy items. If you can, move to a seat that's not directly under a bin. Turbulence is one of those risks that comes with every flight, but by following the crew's directions and doing a few common sense things on your own, you should be able to reduce or eliminate most of that risk. The AirSafe.com Foundation has set up a page at turbulence at airsafe.org that will link you to a number of online resources on turbulence. I'll be right back with some final thoughts after this brief message. If you have a serious interest in the study of aviation safety, one of the key skills you have to have is the ability to analyze data. My book, Understanding Aviation Safety Data, might be the perfect tool for that job. Based on my experiences from analyzing thousands of incidents and accidents, this book has detailed step-by-step -step procedures for asking and answering the 12 basic kinds of aviation safety questions you're likely to encounter. To find out more about the book, visit Speed Break Publishing at orders.speedbreak.com. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have for today. Before we end this conversation, I'd like to remind all my listeners that this podcast is produced by the AirSafe.com Foundation, a nonprofit organization that supports a number of efforts to further the public's understanding of aviation safety and aviation security. For information about the Foundation, or to make a tax-deductible donation, please visit airsafe.org. Feel free to send us feedback at feedback.airsafe.org. You can check out the other airsafe.com podcasts at podcast.airsafe.org. For more information about airline safety, you can find us at airsafe.com. That's A-I-R-S-A-F-E dot com. Or type the words airline safety into your favorite search engine. 
We're probably on the first page of results. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.